Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I want to thank the organizers of this panel for allowing me to uh, participate in this most important discussion. Uh, as we know, uh, there's been increased demand for the use of body-worn cameras throughout the nation. Uh, as uh, Mr. Buttar stated, uh, that has primarily come about as a result of the Eric Brown uh, shooting and death. And, and you mean Ferguson. Michael Brown? There, there has, however, been use of body cameras prior to that across <coughs> the nation. As we know, President Obama it's has called for spending $74 billion to equip the nation's more than 50,000 law enforcement officers with body-worn cameras. At present, 5,000 or 27 percent of the nation's 18,000 law enforcement agencies reportedly use body-worn cameras. A third of them, two-thirds reported they do not have specific policies, however, governing the use of those cameras. It is believed that uh, body-worn cameras, one, will enhance transparency, accountability, and oversight of the police. It is also suggested they will reduce the incident of police misconduct and ex excessive and deadly use of force. It will reduce the number of citizen complaints against police and protect the police against false allegations of bias, abuse, or excessive use of force. Uh, the evidence from the, the, the cameras can be used in the citizen complaint process as well as investigating use of force incidents. It is also believed their use will increase the professionalism of the police and make them more self-aware of their behavior during encounters with the public. There is, however, limited empirical research or evidence to support a lot of these uh, assumptions. Uh, at present, there are two empirical studies that are frequently being cited as evidence of the effectiveness of those uh, body cameras. The first is a study conducted with the Rialto, California Police Department in 2013. Uh, this study found after a one-year observation period, it used the treatment and control group design. So uh, a, a certain number of officers were given the body-worn cameras and then compared to the control group officers that did not uh, wear the cameras. And then these complaints, use of force incidents, and other uh, actions of misbehavior or misconduct were then compared uh, relative to each group uh, with or without the cameras. After that one year period, there was observed a 59% reduction in use of force incidents for the officers wearing the cameras and an 87% decrease in citizen complaints prior from the prior year. Officers wearing the cameras accounted for 32% of the use of force incidents during that year compared to 68% for officers without cameras. The findings of the Mesa, Arizona Police Department study were uh, similar. Um, the question is, um, you know, are the cameras a panacea? Will they address all issues? No. Uh, the, the real challenge lies with the policies that are put in place governing the use of those cameras. Uh, as many of you know, I was an advocate for, a proponent for the traffic cameras. Uh, I believe in the use of traffic, of, of technology, because it removes that human subjectivity that affects so much of the decision making in the criminal justice system, but specifically to policing. And that is the area within which we have a lot of the bias and, and the egregious uh, misconduct by police in that we don't have that, that, um, that it, it's, it's a, a matter of human behavior, basically subjectivity, implicit bias. Do I think that all pe police officers are intentionally uh, out committing bias acts against 
African Americans or people of color? No, I do not. I think a lot of it is the implicit bias. I would suggest that's where research needs to go into looking at how we can implement that into the screening and training of our law enforcement officers, coupled with the use of technology. Thank you. Thank you.